Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. Hashtag live. You're joining us live during the 7 o'clock hour, Central Standard Time, the United States of America. Hashtag record if you're joining any other time. Hashtag shared if you will consider putting not only this conversation, but also the Pastor Doug page out on your timeline. I would greatly, greatly appreciate that. That way, when your family and your friends uh, possibly follow the page. They'll get notifications when we go live and they can join us here all the time. Another way you can share this page out is by tagging your friends in the comments. Actually tag their names down there. Another way, of course, that we do every day is sharing. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Daryl. Good morning, Yasser. Good morning, Bonnie. And by the way, Yasser, uh, I know that uh, in Pakistan right now it's not 9 o'clock. It's uh, probably around 6 o'clock p.m. Good morning, Sean, Brenda, Leanne, Katrina, Good morning, Donna. Good morning, uh, Johnson, Carla. Johnson, Katina, Carla. Are you new today? If you're new today, hit those hearts, hit those likes, everybody, and let our new uh, folks know that we're glad that they are here. Good morning, Daryl. Good morning, Gail. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Sean. Hit those hearts. like And if you see those emojis going up the side of your device there, those hearts and those thumbs, those are for you first-time guests because we were all first-time guests before we became full-time Pray First members. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Mel. Good morning, Tasha. Good morning, everyone. We're talking about life after breath. Uh, we've been talking about the foundational principles found in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. I'm going to read those scriptures again because we are it's, there's seven, but one of them is a plural of the same, so we're calling them six. Uh, principles of foundation, getting our foundations right so that our character will support our destiny. So when God begins to lay his plans on our lives, you know, I know the thoughts I have to, for you, the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, thoughts of hope and to give you a future that your foundation will support your future. It's so very important. Yes, sir, I thought it was 6 p.m. there. Uh, good morning, Courtney. Good morning, everybody. So on yesterday, we brought up one of the three truths about the resurrection of the dead, and I'm just going to continue that right now. Number one, well, first of all, let me read Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 through 3 for those of you who have not been here, or to, you know, just remind us uh, what these foundational essential principles are so that we can go on to maturity in Christ and spiritual uh, maturity. 6 1. Therefore, leaving the discussion of elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. And that word is also used in other places as maturity. Let us go on to maturity. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms, remember water and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the laying on of hands the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Today we're going to focus on uh, part two of resurrection from the dead. Uh, so yesterday we said, number one, we will be resurrected from the dead. And yesterday we explained that. and We looked at the scriptures uh, showing us that our bodies will be resurrected from the dead. Jesus showed us an example as to what's going to happen to us. Today we're going to go a little bit further with that. In John chapter 11, verse 23 through 26, this is what John said, that Jesus said. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Who's her? He's talking to Martha. Lazarus has just passed away. They're very, very sad. Jesus had waited three days uh, to go and to tend to his friend Lazarus. He knew he was dead. He knew he was sleeping. He knew he was... Uh, in a tomb, he says to, to Martha, your brother will rise again. Everybody hashtag rise again. This is an interactive conversation. If you're unfamiliar with Pray First, if you're not driving or if you're not doing something that needs in your focus, uh, hashtag rise again. 24, Martha said to Jesus, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now that's that's incredible that she believed that uh, she believed that because Jesus had told her that. Uh, so she believed in resurrection. She believed that there was going to be a last day and that she would see her brother live again. 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. Now remember, Jesus' name means I am. I am salvation. I save. I save is what Jesus literally means. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection 
and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. What does he mean by that? The sooner you and I get comfortable and familiar with the fact that we are three-part beings, we're going to be under, able to understand this life's processes much better. We are a body, which is this shell, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We are a soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And for those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ, he has resurrected our spirit. And why do I say it in that way, those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ? Because every man, every woman, every boy, every girl is born with a dead spirit inside of them due to the fall of Adam and Eve. God said, the day you eat that fruit, you will surely die. Their bodies did not die. They were walking, running, and covering themselves with fig leaves. Their souls didn't die. They were thinking, they were feeling, and they were wanting. Their mind, their will, and their emotions were quite active. What died? Their spirit. And that's why they were afraid of God. When you have a dead spirit, you will be afraid of God. When you have a dead spirit, you will be afraid of eternity. When you have a dead spirit, you will be afraid of death. When you have a dead spirit, you will be afraid of a lot of things. Another reason you might be afraid of eternity, death, and things of that nature is that your soul is in control of your life and your thinking, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Jesus said in verse 25, I am the resurrection life. He who believes in me, though he dies, he shall never die. And whoever lives, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you know that followers of Christ never die? They have eternal life. That's what eternal life means. There is a certain sense of immortality to them, not to their bodies, but to their spirits. They'll be reunited with their bodies. We'll talk about that in a moment. When you breathe your last breath here, you will take your next, your, you won't pause in breathing. You will breathe here and your next breath will be in paradise in the presence of God the Father. There will never be a time in eternity where a follower of Christ will be dead. That's number one. We will be resurrected from the dead. Number two, when our bodies die, our spirits immediately pass into the presence of God in paradise. Number one, we will be resurrected. Number two, when our bodies die, our spirits immediately, you know, to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. Let's look at Luke 23, 43, as Jesus talks to a new follower. He says to the thief on the cross next to him, Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. In other words, when you breathe your last breath here, Mr., Sir, <laughs> you will breathe your next breath in the presence of of paradise. Woo! That's that's powerful. Number 3. As at the return of Jesus, so number 1, we will be resurrected from the dead. Number 2, when our bodies die, our spirits immediately pass in the presence of God. Number 3, at the return of Jesus, the spirits of those who have passed are reunited with their transformed bodies and now they are both perfect and eternal. So important. Your spirit is already perfect and eternal. It's the place where you communicate to God. It's the place where God communicates to you. Your spirit, when it, when it is resurrected from the dead and it's living inside of this body temporarily, will be set free from your body when your body dies. Well, it will return, your spirit will return with Christ and it will be reunited with a transformed, perfect and eternal body. Can you imagine? No more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow. No more infections, no, no more cancers, no more concern of death and sickness, no more concern, no more limits. Walk through things, fly through things, fly over things, no more limits. Jesus modeled to us what a newly transformed body can do. He could walk through doors, he could disappear, he could go from here to there instantly, he could go back and forth from earth to heaven. You need to hear that. Jesus modeled to us what transformed bodies can do 
as they become an eternal and they become a perfect spirit. So number two, we've been talking about uh, the, different, the different things found in Hebrews chapter 6. That's resurrection from the dead. Finally, he says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 3, I mean verse 2, that there's also eternal judgment. So let's just take a few moments on that because tomorrow we're going to talk about the second part of eternal judgment, if you will. Hebrews chapter 9, there will be a judgment. There's, there's going to be a judgment. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 through 28. And every person will be judged. How do we know that? Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now that's a truth. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every person who has ever existed will stand before God in judgment. But there's two kinds of judgment. There's two places of judgment and there's two different groups of people there. Hebrews 9, 27 through 28. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. Listen to the next statement. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time. I want to... I I want to go slow. I want you to really listen to this. To those who wait for him, who eagerly wait. He adds an adjective. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. He's not coming back again to save people from their sin. He's coming back again to judge them. Two, two judgments. So important. Judgment is set for every person. Just, just everybody hashtag judgment. Christ was offered for mine. <laughs> okay. Woo. Jesus Christ stood in my place and God passed his judgment on me to him. Jesus Christ took my place. It, at my hearing, Jesus stood in for me. And when God passed down judgment for me, Jesus Christ took it, and he took my sentence, and he took my death sentence. It's why I'll never die again. It's why when my body takes its next breath here, it takes its next breath in eternity. I'll never die again. Jesus died for me. He died for me. He took my sentence. My sentence was death. But the clean had to be sacrificed to redeem the unclean. Jesus, the pure spotless Lamb of God, stood in my place. And he took my judgment. So he's not coming back concerning sin and salvation. He's coming back to judge me. I am in Christ. That judgment that follows that followers of Christ have is not in regard to sin. <laughs> That's right, Courtney. Whew. That judgment that followers of Christ has is not in regard to sin. It's in regard to reward. Everybody in the room, please listen to me, everybody. If you are eager, eagerly waiting for the return of Jesus Christ, everybody, hashtag reward. It's not going to be a judgment of condemnation. There's therefore now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. The word condemnation means guilty as charged. You're not guilty as charged. Jesus took your guilty as charged. Now you will stand before Christ in regard to reward. I want to say this, and I, want to, I, want, I have to say it. Someone who dreads judgment someone who dreads the return of Jesus Christ, someone who is dreading eternity, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. That's a sign of someone who's not ready. Now, there could be a couple of reasons they're not ready, 
but to dread the return of Christ, I'm looking forward to it. Whether, whether I die and go or whether he comes through the clouds, I am anxiously, eagerly, thoroughly, completely, and wholly excited about that. To be in the presence of God, to go ahead and move on from this to that is going to be the reason I exist. The reason I exist is to be in the presence of the Lord, to be known by Him, and to know Him, and to be with Him. I am an alien to this planet. I'm, not, I'm in this world, but Scripture says I'm not of this world. So to be, to be concerned, to be worried, to be dreadful of eternity and uh, the return of Christ and, and, and my judgment would say that there's something in me not ready. There are two judgments. Let me give them to you real quick and then I'll pray. And, and one day we'll study all of these much, much deeper and much, much further. I promise you. But this is just part of foundations, this particular teaching. The two judgments. Number one is the judgment seat of Christ. It's also known as the Bema seat. And Bema seat simply means a little bit raised. You'll be up on a little bitty, up on a platform type thing, and God will be high and lifted up. Romans chapter 14, verses 8 through 12. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Such peace. Peace that surpasses understanding. Whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died, it's, this is why he died, and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. And every tongue confess to me that I am Lord. So then, verse 12, each of us shall give an account of himself before God. This is the Bama seat. Listen to me. You're not going to give an account for your sin, followers of Christ. He's not returning in regard to sin and salvation. We just read that. Not for us. You're not going to give an account of your sin or righteousness. You will have on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You will be pure, spotless, and holy, standing in the presence of God. So then, Pastor, what, what, are, what are we going to be standing before him for? Well, why, why are we going to be in his presence? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter nine, uh, I mean chapter 5, verse 9 through 11 says this. Listen closely. Therefore, make it our aim. I love it when it tells us that we can aim towards something. We can focus towards something. Therefore, make it your aim in your life, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. What's your aim? To be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. There it is, the Bema seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he's done, whether good or bad. You say, whoa, that sounds like he's judging us for our sin. No, stop taking verses out of context. You can't pull these things and say that. Verse 11, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, not his, not his frightening terror, but his great awe, respect, his, his holiness of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are all known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. Listen, make it your aim. Why? Let's continue reading. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For no, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For no foundation, everybody hashtag foundation. For no foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, here's, here's what he's judging. Each one's work will become clear. What? Their aim. 
What are they aiming at? What are they focusing at? What are they living their lives for? Let's look back at what uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 9 said, Therefore make it your aim to be pleasing to the Lord. Each one's aim, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it. It's a capital D day saying the judgment day of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ, the payment seat of Christ, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work, of which sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, if anyone's work endures on the foundation that we're talking about, if anyone's work, if anyone's superstructure endures the substructure, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. Everybody hashtag reward again. If anyone's work is burned, now these are only followers of Christ at this at this judgment seat. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. This is at the judgment seat of Christ. If they're, they're followers of Jesus, they're Christians, they're saved, they're born again. Everyone he's talking about here are saved, Christian, born again, followers of Jesus Christ. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet as through fire. So listen to me. This is an important statement for you to hear. We are saved by grace, but we are judged by works. Period. You are saved by grace. It says right here, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. He's saved by grace. But it says he will suffer loss if his wood, hay, and stubble or his wood, hay, and straws burn. Your rewards will be lesser. Everybody's not going to get the same thing in heaven. Everyone's heaven experience will not be the same. It will not be fair. It will not be equal. Your heaven experience is going to be... There is unimaginably wonderful, but they're not going to be the same. Some are going to suffer loss while others great gain. Some people are saved selfish and continue living selfish. I promise you. And, and their works are going to bear that out at the judgment seat of Christ. Um, faith without works is dead. So there's some very serious implications here. Number one, your faith might be dead and therefore you're lost. Number two, you just did not make it your aim to be well-pleasing to him. I'm telling you this statement one more time as I get ready to close. You are saved by grace, but you will be judged by your works. Every knee will bow. Some will bow willingly. I will bow willingly. Every knee will bow. Some will bow willingly. Others will be forced. We'll talk about those people tomorrow. Is this making sense to anyone? I, I don't want to just get up here and read a bunch of words and, and, and you not comprehend or understand it. Is this making sense? Hashtag yep, yep, or yes, I'm, I'm understanding. Yes, I'm following. If you have questions, you can send them to me. Send them to me through Messenger. Uh, write them in the comments here. Uh, but however you need, I, I want to try to help answer them. If I don't know the answer, I'll find out the answer. I promise you, there's... There's, no, there's very few answers that I can't find out. I just want to know that, that this is meaningful to you. That For some of you, you need, to, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ so that your spirit can be born again. You're, you're, you're a walking dead person. You won't be at this judgment. If you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ and trusted in his death, burial, and resurrection, uh, you will not be at this judgment. You will be at the judgment seat I talk about tomorrow. So I want to encourage all of you to be back here tomorrow. Heavenly Father, for every person listening and every person watching, I pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit that you will make this clear. That the things we do throughout the day matter. That we, that we take aim to do what is well-pleasing to you matters in every instance. Not just in what we do, but also in our responses to people. In our responses to people we disagree with and we don't like and we think are doing crazy things. Heavenly Father, tame our tongue, tie our tongue so that we can benefit from 
uh, Proverbs where it says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those that love it will eat the fruit thereof. We're all going to eat fruit, but let's eat fruit we love. Help, help us to do that, Lord, in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. See you guys tomorrow. Hashtag live, hashtag record, hashtag shared. I'll be back tomorrow, and we'll talk about the second judgment, which is not the judgment seat of Christ. And it will, it will be horrible. Bye, everybody.